as Senator Britt of Alabama is recognized. Thank you, Chairman Brown. Uh, welcome to all of the people here and your families. I saw that so many of you brought your families, so we, we are so glad that you all are here um, today as well. So I want to start. Um, thank you so much for coming by. Enjoyed having being able to have a conversation. I want to start where my colleague from Georgia left off. He is exactly right. We have got to go back to instilling confidence in the FDIC. It was created in 1933 so that Americans did have confidence in that. And I think the FDIC has lost its way and has forgotten what its core mission is. So um, just, just want to associate myself with those comments and saying we want our best and brightest working at the SEC. We want that to be the place they want to work. That's ultimately going to be what helps us maintain the stability of our financial institutions and also ensure Americans are confident that their hard-earned taxpayer dollars are protected. So um, Mrs. Goldsmith Romero, we discussed yesterday, I am, I am incredibly um, concerned, obviously, that as the FDIC has strayed from its primary core purpose and mission, it's become an agency that is overly involved in controversial rulemaking and has become um, politicized in many ways in its decision-making process rather than actually following that core mission. And on that, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on if we see another failure like we saw um, last year. You know, let's say a bank similar in scale to SVB uh, were to fail, how would you approach that resolution process? Thank you, Senator. I very much enjoyed our conversation in your office and appreciate um, your commitment to, to um, making sure that the FDIC thrives in its, in its mission. So I dealt with a lot of failed banks mm -hmm. while at SIGTARP, and these things happen fast. So I think the first thing you need to do is to ensure that the FDIC is looking at pockets of risk um, in a very proactive way, data analytics way, and that we also understand uh, connections. And then we figure out you know, what needs to happen, first thing you need to do is sort of figure out what you're going to do with the bank in terms of a resolution when you walk in. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be an auction? Is that just going to be wound down? How do you keep well, deposits? Yeah, and safe? on the auction, let's say there's going to be an auction, would you allow an open bidding process where all banks can or, um, you know, financial institutions can be a part of that? I think we'd want to bring all the bidders in to try to get the best, best result. All interested parties should have that opportunity. And in what circumstance would you decide to liquidate, um, you know, rather than auction off the bank, uh, yeah. the private sector? It's, it's tough. It's tough in terms of liquidation. Um, you want to make sure that the deposits are safe. That's mm -hmm. that's sort of the number one thing with the deposit insurance fund. You also want to look at those assets and say if there's going to be a loss to deposit insurance fund, you want to see if there's assets to sell. So to sell. So sometimes, though, there's going to be a, liqu a liquidation. Well, if you let's say that it is a bidding process, how do you decide which offer to accept? Well, I think we have to follow the least cost test, which is which is laid out by Congress, and then you know we, we'd follow all the standards that are that are in that, and we'd follow all the rules. That so Congress under that has. scenario, would you commit to accepting the highest bidder, the the, the highest bidder that comes to you? Yeah, I think you'd have to go into the very specifics. I think that's what you're looking for, right? You're right. looking for the highest bidder because you want the least cost um, to the deposit insurance fund. Yeah, absolutely. That's the objective here. The objective is not about playing politics. It's not about whether or not we want a big bank to get bigger or whether we want someone in this market. It is what is best for the American people. It is to ensure that, um, you know, we don't want to have to dip into the diff at $20 billion. I mean, to me, uh, Chair Gruenberg did a poor job and chose to play politics, and the American people paid the price. And it is your job not only, and or his job, uh, not only as you know the secondary supervisor, but also in his role at the FDIC to ensure that these things don't happen. And when they do, though, it's not time to take a look and figure out what people on this committee may want you to do. You have to do what is best for the American people. So I'm glad to hear you say that you will do that as well. Um, in taking a, taking a step back, um, obviously there was poor internal risk management and regulators clearly failed to do their job um, before the, the banks failed. There were numerous red flags um, that were missed. We've talked about that over and over again. Um, would you characterize, though, what happened as a capital or a liquidity issue with SVB? I think it's a failure in risk management and then a failure in supervision. And then capital or liquidity? 
So I think the issue of liquidity becomes really important when a bank is, is going down because short-term liquidity dries up so fast, and so then they can't continue. And then when you couple that with the bank runs, that's where you get into trouble. Okay, and last, I have a few, um, I think it was most definitely liquidity, but a couple of, lastly, do you think that 2155, um, the long-term debt proposal that is before you currently or before uh, FDIC currently, that it is properly adhering to the tailoring requirements in 2155? Thank you, Senator. I've seen your letter, um, which is pretty complex, and <laughs> and I'm still looking at the long-term uh, debt uh, debt proposal, um, and I want to look at the comments. Okay, and, and that's fair. Let me ask you this then. Sure. Do you agree, Chair Powell mentioned earlier this week, that 2155 applies to all rulemaking out of your agency? Do you agree? 100%. It's the law of the land. Thank you.